What do you think the world humanities challenge will be over the next decade as we enter 2020? Um, back to the principle, Lewis, of just different paradigms beginning to collapse. You know, economically, politically, socially, environmentally, religiously, yes. education, journalism, the, uh, you know, medicine. Um, they, they have to uh, move into chaos. Mm. And chaos is just unpredictable. Because they're not order. working. Yeah, exactly. But now here's the challenge for humanity. You have one of two ways to embrace the breakdown of those, those, those paradigms. You can face them with anger and hostility and fear and you are only contributing to more of it. Uh, we have to see that those breakdowns are essential for something greater to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> we can't wait for governments to take care of us. That's t we can't wait for uh, medicine to, to give us a drug that's going to heal us mm -hmm. from a condition. The truth is, with a greater level of consciousness, the change in awareness because of information. The greatest challenge we have is those, as those paradigms break down is to no longer emotionally react in the same way and be victims. You can't say, this president, this person, this, this whatever, is actually making me feel this way and think this way. Basically, you're in the program that you're, something outside of you is controlling you, yeah. how you feel and how you think. So then to self-regulate then is to say how I think and feel is going to change my outer environment. So then mm. we're all faced with great opportunities brilliantly disguised as impossible situations. And we are at that point, at that nexus point in our, our evolution as a species. So then you don't try to fix that. That's never going to work. What you do is you create something better. Mm -hmm. And then everybody just naturally just leaves that and goes here. Now, it used to be some people would just come here and the majority would stay here because they're clinging to what they've been programmed or believe in. But now, because of information, everybody's like, that's not going to work. I already know it's not going to work and I don't care what anybody says. This is working for me. So people are moving to new, to new, um, uh, to new applications, to new paradigms because it's working for them. So as long as we don't emotionally react to the breakdown that's happening currently in the world, and chaos is just unpredictable order, you know, as, as, as things move towards disorder, the novelty that's being created is literally chaos. Mm -hmm. Because the known and everything staying the same is order. But as you step out into that unknown, it's the, you're having... The chaos is unpredictable order being expressed through novelty. And we have to be able to learn how to take that disorder and with the application of brain and heart coherence, create more order. So you can't mm. just say, hey, I'm standing up for peace and, you know, and being, being miserable with your coworker. You, you, right. you, you don't get to talk about peace until there's, you, you're, the, you're the living prayer of peace, mm. not just, we know, we know crime rates go down and violence goes down when there's peace projects in communities where there's meditation on peace. But when those peace gathering projects end, you know, you see that crime and violence and everything returns back to the same level. So it's not enough to just think it. Mm. We got to demonstrate it. So if I'm demonstrating peace and you're demonstrating peace, somebody else because of mere neurons is going to go, wow, that person's unpredictable. Wow, they're different. It's given me permission to do the same. So I think that ultimately moving into that state of being, you know, as, as human beings and, and, and creating unity mm -hmm. that, you know, you keep watching so many programs on television that talk you into prejudice, that talk you into separation, that talk you into fear, that talk you into violence, that talk you into war, deceit, uh, negativity. Um, you're, you're not going to trust anybody. In fact, you're going to see difference between you and me or anybody because that's what separation does. But yeah. when your heart's centered and you feel connected, you don't see the person any longer, mm -hmm. right? You see something transcendent. You see an essence, right? Yeah. And I think if you do that really well, that kind of emergence of a, of a new consciousness uh, that's less dependent on, on all of those outer things, it's really difficult yeah. to control. And if you want to control a community, control their emotions mm -hmm. uh, and control them in survival. Right. When you overcome your emotions, 
you can see the hidden meaning behind all things. And when everybody's looking this way, you may be looking that way because you understand, look, you've just overcome your fear. Yeah. You've just overcome your yeah. hostility and anger. You've overcome the program of whatever it is. I swear to you, you are going to be able to connect people. And that, that then is the hope of the future. That's why, mm. I'm, that's why I'm hopeful of the future.